Hello all my truth seekers. In this video, I will be talking about the death of Martin Luther King Jr. Did you know that his crew set him up? Let's get into it. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, the tragic event of April 1968 included King's killing and the false blame attributed to James Earl Ray. Many may have forgotten that King's death also marked the unlikely rise of Reverend Jesse Jackson. Oh, yes. King had accepted an invitation to speak at the church of Reverend Clay Evans on the south side of Chicago in 1966, where Jackson, having met King in Salma, Alabama in 1965, and always one to seize an opportunity, pushed himself closer to King throughout the visit he picked King up at the airport and hobnobbed with his team enough to earn a staff job and an annual salary of $3,000 from the King organization. Despite his official inclusion on King's staff, King soon found himself unimpressed with aspects of Jackson's personality. He was especially troubled by Jackson's intuitive ability to escalate encounters with government officials. Yes, just for press. Police departments and innocent bystanders, too. As Kenneth R. Timmerman, the author of Shakedown, exposing the real Jesse Jackson, wrote, and I quote, King left Chicago profoundly suspicious of Jackson's taste for its self-promotion. Oh, yes. No matter how hard Jackson may have worked to get to the front of the line of the luminaries within the late 1960s civil rights movement, he lacked one thing that King's closest confidants possessed. Jackson wasn't a man of the cloth. Dr. King told Jesse that everybody who worked in the movement was a minister, a communist, and a friend of Jackson. So Jesse went to the seminary for six months, dropped out, and called himself a minister, said Hurley Green, a former speechwriter. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes, I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. Jackson's limited time at the Chicago Theological Seminary, also known as CTS, was verified by chaplain A. Knighton Stanley, who stated that Jackson was not committed to the church, nor had discovered a true vocation. Jackson had even failed to fulfill the required sermon writing and delivery class that one would think would be necessary for someone genuinely interested in the ministry and communicating with his flock. Oh, yes. Jackson later clarified why he attended CTS for the time that he did. Here's what he said, and I quote, I decided to go to the seminary to learn how to do without the law to change society, to change it in deeper ways. Uh, okay. The distrust and aspiration King had with Jackson continued through 1968. In Memphis, one week before the assassination, King decided to cancel participation in demonstration that he believed could turn violent. In front of King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference SCLC staff, Jackson disagreed with King's cancellation of the march. Oh, yes, he did. Angry at Jackson's response, King walked out of the meeting because the team was nearing the breaking point. Jackson quoted by Timmerman wrote, and I quote, mistrusted his ambition, his audacity, and his refusal to be a team player. Unbelievable. They could have never imagined the depths in which Jackson would sink a week later. I mean, it gets really deep. 
Hey, my truth seekers, did you know that I have a blog? A blog that I post personally selected stories onto. I also have an online journal where I give you a peek at my personal life and more. So please go to the truth show channel dot blog. All the links are below. On April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King was in Memphis supporting a worker strike. By nightfall, army snipers were in position. Military officers were on a nearby roof with cameras and Lloyd Jowers had been paid to remove the gun after the fatal shot was fired. When the dust had settled, King had been hit and a cleanup operation was set in motion. James Earl Ray was framed, the crime scene was destroyed, and witnesses were killed. William Pepper, King's attorney and friend, has conducted a 30-year investigation into his assassination in 1999. Lloyd Jower and other co-conspirators were brought to trial in a civil action suit on behalf of the King family. 70 witnesses set out the details of a conspiracy that involved J. Edgar Hoover and FBI Richard Helms and the CIA, the military, Memphis police, right along with Jesse Jackson, an organized crime, yes. The jury took an hour to find the King family. In an act of state, you finally have the truth. How the U.S. government and a member of King's team shut down a movement for social change by stopping its leader, dead in his tracks however getting back to the shooting as king lay dying on the balcony of the lorraine motel jackson claims and has claimed since 1968 that he was the last to speak to king and cradles king's head as he died Jackson then appeared in Chicago television the next day, ran a bloody turtleneck that he said he was stained with the blood of the fallen civil rights leader. King associates have constantly changed Jackson's self-described role on that day as fabricated and distasteful because many said Jackson was in the parking lot below when King was shot. Critics also claimed that Jackson went so far as to wipe King's blood on his shirt for the sole purpose of going on television to build his legend. Yes, to build his legendary status. After King's death, the leadership of the SCLC fell into the hands of MLK's chosen successor, Ralph Abernathy. This pissed Jackson off off and he immediately clashed with Abernathy about whom Jackson famously exclaimed by biographer Eddie Stone and quote saying I never listened to that in oh yes this is what Jackson said I never listened to that in Abernathy isn't the only civil rights leader to incur the wrath of Jackson ambition there have also been conflicts with Minister Louis Farrakhan Reverend Al Sharpton and former Atlanta mayor, Andrew Young. If anyone challenges Jackson's rights, media darling and ace pundit, Jackson viewed them as a threat and must be destroyed. It was reported that Jackson told the snipers that King would wear a tie. Take a look at this. But Al Sharpton admitted to wearing a wire against the mob. If you are willing to risk your life wearing a wire against the mob, Imagine what you'll do against black folks. You feel me? Remember Jesse Jackson. These are not my words. According to William uh, William Pepper, Dr. King family attorney. If you haven't read the book, Orders to Kill and the Assassination of Dr. King, you better read it. He names Jesse Jackson unquestionably as an accomplice to the murder. They say Jesse called off the security at the Divine Lorraine Hotel in Memphis on April 4th. There was a group of black brothers. Like when I go around, I got brothers here doing security for me. Get them a hand, by the way, for helping to keep Dr. Umar safe. So when Dr. King got to Memphis, there was a bunch of brothers who said, we gonna hold you down on the strength. Jesse Jackson told them they wasn't needed. He called them off. Jesse called them off. And within about an hour, Dr. King was dead. Also, somebody from the Southern Christian Leadership Office called the hotel. Dr. King was on the ground floor. He wasn't supposed to be up in room 306. 
Somebody from the SCLC office called the hotel and said Dr. King requests that his room be upstairs. They needed him upstairs so the Memphis police officer who killed Dr. King, Dr. King was murdered by a Memphis police officer. The Memphis police officer who murdered Dr. King could get a clean shot. And then the Green Berets, who was the backup shooter, said that they were told that friendlies were not wearing ties. Anybody who was not wearing the tie should not be shot. Why did Jesse Jackson not have a tie on that day? How did he know not to get shot? You see? No, Dr. King was suffocated to death in the hospital. Dr. King showed up alive at the hospital, and this is in the book by William Pepper. And how do we know that he was suffocated to death at the hospital? A white nurse. A white nurse in the room said that they pushed us to the side, told us to get out, but she did not leave. She stayed at the door, and she watched the doctor and the FBI agent put over Dr. King's face. And suffocated him to death. And just like they said when they killed Fred Hampton, good and dead now. Mm. Yeah. Hey, don't miss out. Click the subscribe and like button. Also, don't forget the bell button and then select all so that you can get notifications for every video I upload on the Truth Show channel and the Truth Show channel deluxe. Never miss out, y'all. You see, Jackson eventually became a minister of sorts by name only just name only you see the cts offered him a master's degree in divinity in 2000 the only requirement was for him to engage in a two-hour discussion with the professor on abortion and the death penalty sitting on the board of the cts in 2000 was jesse jackson jr <laughs> the young democratic member of congress oh yes jackson had used the title of reverend since his early days as a community organizer, even without education in theology. He rose to stardom based on a contentious history with Dr. King, meaning he was being argumentative and in many cases dishonest. He stayed in power by extorting companies out of donations with race-based threats. And he has built enemies lists, white, black, and international, as long as anyone in contemporary American history, he keeps hope alive that his legacy will someday find itself parallels to King's. Yet, like his coalition, his greatest dreams may only be found somewhere over the rainbow because, as we know, that never happened. He even tried to get in the corner with Obama, but Obama wasn't having it. He knew about Jesse. Jesse found this out, and here's what he reported saying about Obama. Talk about the history repeating itself. Well, the Reverend made those uh, remarks there during a break. He was being interviewed on the Fox News channel. Jackson says he didn't realize his microphone was still on. Today, he was in full damage control, apologizing for what he calls trash talk. Trash talk, then but garbage, and, and, that, and that's why I want to be careful about trash talk because what's private sometimes becomes public, and something we use words we shouldn't use and language we shouldn't use. Uh, and then when it becomes public, it becomes embarrassing. Because we fall down sometime, but we get back up again because the ground is no place for a champion. And I am. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear any more of that malarkey. I just couldn't. Just couldn't. Even now, Jesse's influence on the black community and to continue the legacy of Dr. King hasn't transpired. It goes to show that being undermining and scheming your way to the top can only get you so far. Well, that's it. Let me know what you think below on that note don't forget to subscribe share and like and hit that bell so you get notifications from when i do post my videos see y'all later love you all bye here's a brief word from my sponsor the world's falling apart every day another shocking headline makes you wonder what tomorrow will bring that's why those who knows what's coming are using today to prepare i'm talking about getting your family some high quality emergency food from my patron supply my patron supply is a nation's leading preparedness company they've been in business for going on 14 years now and they've served millions of American families. Now they want to help you by giving you $50 off their popular four-week emergency food kit. Oh yes, you get four weeks of food per person with meals designed to give you more than 2,000 calories a day. 
By the way, this food stays fresh up to 25 years in proper storage, so it will be there when you need it. Other food goes bad first, you know what I mean? So don't wait. Go to prepare with my link here with the truth and claim your four-week emergency food kit. You will save $50 per kit if you act now. So prepare with me at preparewithtruth.com.